Hey guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please give us a call if you guys are looking to improve your credit score, lower your car payment, buy a car, trade in a car. Uh, if you're looking to purchase your first home, if you're looking to purchase a rental property, we can help you. Give us a call today, 877-205-7771. Talk to you guys soon and thanks again. Hello everyone, this is Calvin Russell, CEO and founder of 850 Club Credit Consultation. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today we're going to talk about the four ways to avoid having to put down um, a down payment on a vehicle if you're going to the dealership, okay? And the reason why I want to talk about this is because I saw that it's a very common thing that happens when people go to a dealership uh, to purchase a vehicle uh, or any car lot is that they always think that they need to have money down. And there are um, at least about four ways to avoid doing that. So let's go straight into it. Uh, number one is that a lot of people don't know if you simply change the car, that may change the, uh, the fact that you may have to put money down. Uh, I'll give an example. Sometimes people want to go into higher end vehicles and I think higher end is anything above like 30,000. And the reason why I say that is because uh, working at a traditional dealership, like, you know, a middle-class income dealership, I would say like, you know, Toyota, Honda, Nissan, uh, Chevy, you know, uh, Ford. Those are like, you know, the average American you know, vehicles, right? Uh, well, not American, but the average, you know, American can afford those vehicles, you know, under about 30,000. If that is the case, um, anytime you're staying in that range where it's above 30,000, that's what the things start to get a little bit more difficult because now they start looking at income. When you start going over $30,000 a year, uh, you know, for a vehicle, you start to go into that $500 a month, $450, uh, you know, $550, $600 and beyond. So now income is going to play a role. So that's number one. Do you have to have that type of car? A lot of times people go to the dealership and say, hey, I want that car. Well, there's nothing wrong with wanting that car. Uh, but sometimes if you go with a car that's a little bit newer, sometimes it's a little bit older, just ask them, what vehicle do I have to go into? Or can I go into? What, am I, what is my list of options if I don't want to put any money down? And if you ask them that, they will show you what those vehicles are. OK, or who knows, you probably had planned on putting a thousand dollars down, but there may be a list of vehicles that you can get with five hundred dollars down or, of course, no money. So that's number one. Can you change the car? Are you open to changing the car? We understand that there's a compromise, but that's going to be a compromise anyway. OK, so that's number one. Number two, can you get a co-signer involved? I think a lot of people forget about co-signers. There are some people that don't mind co-signing for you, whether it's a brother, sister, husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, a family member, um, a friend, or whomever. And people you know sometimes don't mind co-signing for you, especially if they know you well or whatever the case may be. And I've seen situations where a person would have, you know, they got they got approved for a car and they would need like $2,000 down. They got a co-signer and now the bank likes them. They're the stronger buyer because now we have two incomes. We have uh, two people responsible for an auto loan. And so it's easier. It's an easier transition uh, to go from, you know, uh, having a certain amount of income to now two incomes because that's what it really what it's going to come down to. OK, is you no know, can the person financially afford to pay that particular car note? And so when you have two people now responsible for the loan that plays a role okay so that's number two then of course number three you want to find out if you can come back at a later date with a higher credit score normally what I've seen is anytime you have well not say anytime but most times when you're looking for a car and your score is under 640 under 620 under 600 somewhere in that range like if you're in a 505 if you're a 550 you got to expect to put money down so to avoid that what I tell my clients because um, we do have some clients where they say right, soon, right off the bat, they say, hey, Calvin, my goal is to get a car in the next, you know, next month or next two months. I say, well, the longer you wait, the better the terms will be. Uh, you may or may not have to put any money down. The interest rates will be a lot lower. Just little things like that play a major role. So the question is, can you wait a, you know, a month or two? Can you wait another, you know, three to four months? Assuming that your score is starting to build and go in the right direction. OK, so can you wait for that to happen? Um, and then, of course, uh, to wrap it up. Number four, can you come back with if you're making more income? So, for example, if you're making, I don't know, let's say $10 an hour and you come back and you're making $12 an hour, that may play a role. The bank see that you're making more money. They trust you more, that there's more, that there's more income coming in. They may not ask for, you know, some type of you no know, money to be put down. If you go from $15 an hour to $20 an hour, if you go from hourly paid to salary. So a lot of times income plays a major role, especially when you're looking to go into a car. Now, there are a couple things to remember okay number one is that um, their banks like to see 
that you have credit and income. When you don't have both, then it's just going to get more difficult to do this, to go into a transaction, and that's a purchase or a lease without any money down. I'll give an example. If a person makes over $100,000 a year but doesn't have much credit, then that means that no one's really giving them the, the opportunity to start paying their bills on time where it's on paper, okay? So money does help a few things because they can count on that, okay? So that person would more than likely, um, you know, get approved without any money down, especially if they're making that kind of income, but there's a lot of factors. So a person can be making $70,000 a year and their credit's not the best, right? So a little bit lesser income or let's say $40,000 a year and they, you know, and of course they've had, you know, repossessions, things of that sort. All of that plays a major role. A person can be a 640 credit score without having any credit cards. They can just have, you know, student loans. Student loans help generate a score, but it does not help build a score. I say that because a lot of people, especially millennials, they may have gone through a period of time where they've never built their credit before, and they may have they may have gotten that job, you know, the, the college degree and all the rest of that stuff. And so now you have someone that's making thirty, forty thousand dollars a year, whatever. And now, but their credit, you know, is kind of stagnant. Not so much, not so much stagnant, but it's not. It hasn't been established. So since it has been established, the question is, you know, can the bank trust that person? And that's where it gets difficult. So income is always going to become before everything else. Then you may have a person that has a great credit score, but their income is low, okay? Normally what happens in a situation like this is that banks don't, the problem is, is that banks don't ask for a lot of proof of income documents when a person starts to have a higher score. I would say 650 or higher. So a person could be 680, um, 690, 750, and they could have gotten there, but their income may be, I don't know, 15, 18, $20,000 a year, $25,000 a year, whatever those numbers are. And now the problem is, is that the bank would rather not know. They figure if you've made it this far, you paid your bills on time, that they may not have to worry about you continue to pay your bills on time in the future, okay? So those are the four ways to avoid having to put down money when you're trying to buy a car or lease a car. And of course, I hope that that video was helpful. If you like this video, like it. And of course, if you wanna share it, share it. And as always, be sure to subscribe as we have more great content on the way. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day.